Pat Mora by Anne Mark Pat Mora was born on January 19, 1942 in El Paso, Texas. Pat Mora is a Latin author of poetry, nonfiction, and children's books. She graduated from Texas Western College. She received honorary doctorates from North Carolina State University and Sunny Buffalo. She is also an honorary member of ALA. She is married to Vern Scarborough and is a mother of three children. In the picture on the right is one of her daughters. In her career, she was a former teacher, university administrator, museum director, and a consultant. She has always been a part of something so great. Mora's writing is created by the Mexico-United States border, where she was born and spent much of her life, recognizing the human and cultural diversity of the Southwest United States and Northern Mexico. I love looking at her books because I know that she brings so much of her own life into these children's books. A literacy advocate is really excited about sharing book joy. Mora founded the community-based Family Literacy Creativity of Children's Day and Book Day. Pat was inspired by the Mexican tradition of nationally celebrating El Dia Niño on April 30th. Children's Day and Book Day have grown in the U.S. to include all children, languages, and cultures. The two-part goal includes a daily commitment to promote literacy and book joy, and crowning April book, yes, says, that unite communities. Moore has received honorary doctorates in letters from North Carolina State University in Sunny Buffalo and is an honorary member of the American Library Association. She was a recipient of a Civitella Veneria Fellowship to write in Albria, Italy. This goes to show that she has done so much in her lifetime. In the book, I Pledge of Allegiance, Livy and her great aunt, Lobo, are learning the Pledge of Allegiance at the same time, but for different reasons. Lobo is practicing in order to become a citizen of the United States. She is proud of her Mexican heritage, but is also grateful to be in America. In school, Livy has been chosen to lead her class in saying the pledge. Lobo and Libby decide to practice together at home and talk about what it means to both of them. The pencil and the digitally painted illustrations have a watercolor softness that shows the deep warmth and closeness between niece and aunt. The characters are endearing, rendered primarily in shades of blue. The story will help young children become more thoughtful about this common daily recitation sprinkled with Spanish words. This gentle book explores what it means to be an American from perspective of children and new citizen. It is great that Mora has connected her own life to this book. I loved it so much that I actually bought it when I was student teaching. And you will get to hear Pat Mora talk about this book in particular. I'm trying something totally different, uh, writing a book with someone. I had done one early on, but this is actually, I have three adult children, and uh, one of them is a lawyer, my older daughter, and she has been interested in writing children's books. And so I said to her, well, what if you and I write a book together? And I think we first came up with the idea in 07. Uh, I had seen a video of an aunt that I have written about. She is my mythic woman. Um, and she was like a second grandmother to me. Uh, I love this woman. And I always feel like I'm through writing about her and she sneaks into another book 
So I saw this video clip in which my aunt said something very profound that I'm not going to tell till the book comes out about why she became a citizen very late in her life. So she was born in Mexico, uh, comes as a teen, and I talk a lot about her life in my family memoir, House of Houses. She uh, becomes totally bilingual to the point that by the time I'm a little girl, she's reading Nancy Drew books to me. And um, so I said to my daughter, at a time when this country is wrestling with this whole issue of immigration, and I fear that there's so much hatred ahead and that there's going to be a license to say shocking things given, you know, the rhetoric of this country. So I said to her, what if you and I wrote a book about this aunt, about a little girl, the little girl will be my daughter, who did have this same aunt in her life. My aunt lived to be 94. And uh, so we are doing it on email. So uh, I started it, and then Libby is my daughter's name, Libby Martinez. She writes a little section, and then I write a little section. And I said, we won't feel any stress. We're not going to be, I am the kind that revises constantly, so I'm sure I'm going to drive her crazy, because I said, well, let's just keep going. And sure enough, after the third entry, I said, well, mom decided to start tweaking. So, you know, I've begun to sort of say, well, we need to condense a little bit. It's going to be a challenge to try to do it in a, in a picture book. So I'm going to talk, talk to my editor and see, do we want to keep it a picture book? I, you know, or do we want to go to uh, maybe chapters? I don't know. Um, but it's just a great process. Uh, for me, you know, my daughter is adding some elements that I wouldn't think of. For example, she's a good lawyer. She said, well, I'm going to go on the web and I'm going to find out what are the questions they are asked. Uh, well, that was a wonderful addition, you know. And uh, then she said, well, I know. She'll be 80. I'll be 8. And so this, this was an aunt that did come over every Friday, and that will be a theme of the book, that every Friday they coach one another for their tests. And kids today understand test anxiety. So that will be sort of a, a sub-theme of the book. In the book, Book Fiesta, it's a very appropriate that the first trade book about Children's Day, Book Day, should be enthusiastically penned by the founder of this holiday, celebrated annually since 1996 on April 30th, the same day as Mexico's Day of the Children. This calls to the arms for connecting kids and books exhorts everyone to read and have fun in whatever language and local they choose. Hooray! Today is our day! El Dia de los Niños! Let's have fun today reading our favorite books. Tun Tun! The straightforward bilingual text in Spanish and English is beautifully illustrated in bright, bold acrylic paintings that integrate books and letters into timeless scenes of multicultural children cavorting, exploring, and of course, reading. I love seeing her connect her books to different languages, especially Spanish. It is great for students to learn both languages, and it's better to have them learn at a young age because then they will click better and remember all the information that they have learned. It was a wonderful surprise to me one day when an editor, uh, Adriana Dominguez, um, who was then at Harper, said to me, you know, we ought to think of a book about Dia. We have not seen the diversity in publishing that is really necessary for the transformation that I talk about. And I have written about this a lot. I've spoken about it a lot. Uh, I'm not seeing a tremendous amount of movement. So we need to see diversity in publishing because someone selects the books that will be published, 
someone selects the books that will get the full page color ad in important publications. Um, people on uh, award committees decide what books will have a nice seal of approval. It, children's books sound very sweet, and they are, but it is a, a very complex and sadly sometimes political process. That's just the nature of life. So it was such a thrill that there was actually a Latina in publishing, and uh, she said, I would really like us to think about a book about Dia. And initially, she proposed, did I want to think about a story? Well, I had already written Tomas and the Library Lady. And as an author, one of the things you fear, uh, the longer you are an author, uh, at least for me, there is the terror that I would repeat myself. And so I am always trying to think, well, is that, is that something I have already done? Um, so I said, I, I just don't know that a story is going to work for Dia. But early on, very early on in Dia's life, um, the idea came to me in 96. First Dia celebrations were held in 97. So it was probably right around in there that uh, a librarian in Texas said to me, you need to write a song. And so I ended up doing sort of a, a little Dia song. And I thought, well, maybe we could take that song as a beginning point, And I could begin to expand that. Um, and it became Book Fiesta. So that's how it started. I was thrilled that Rafael Lopez, who is so amazingly talented, was chosen to illustrate the book. This was our second book together. So he had also illustrated Yam mm, Que Rico. And I knew, I, I've said to Rafael, I would love to live in your imagination. You know, as I began to see the images from Book Fiesta, I was just amazed. You know, uh, a, a picture book writer is very dependent upon illustrators. Uh, I joke that when I visit schools and children find out that I don't do the illustrations, they wonder why I was invited. And, and I can understand that, you know. Uh, one of the joys of picture books is uh, the illustrations. So he was so incredibly inventive. Um, and I have numerous pages in the book that I absolutely love sometimes because of the bright color, but also Raphael has um, there's a real tenderness to his work. And uh, there's a scene where a little girl puts her hand down into the water, and there's also a little girl looking up from the water, and they touch on that water, their fingers touch. And that was just such a beautiful, uh, you know, detail. Um, the way both the sun and the moon look down in such a comforting way on these children. And I thought to myself, you know, this is what the world should be like. We should all be looking at our children with that kind of protective smile that in Book Fiesta, both the sun and the moon have toward these children. I made the right decision by choosing Pat Moore. Not only does she make children's books, but she also makes teen books that children can relate to. I love that she puts her own life into her own books. I know that I can bring these books to my own classroom in the future, and my students can learn a different language while reading these books. I definitely think that other people should research her and bring her books into their own classroom.